Hey, what's going on? My name's Chris, and this is part two of my second guitar build. It's an acoustic guitar, and this time with a Florentine cutaway. I may be crazy for trying a cutaway like that on my second guitar, but I'm going to give it a shot. I think it's going to, I hope it's going to turn out okay. All right, so you can see since the last video, I went ahead and finished the mold. It's three layers thick of MDF. I've got some spreaders made. Uh, for the Florentine cutaway, I probably will not use these upper spreaders, but... I wanted to make them anyway because if I ever build a guitar without a cutaway, you know, I've got them and they're right there and I can use them. So I'll probably just use the waist and the lower bout because you know I'm going to have a cutaway here. I've also got the bending forms here. Um, these are the original bending forms that came with the OM um, guitar model that I made previously, my first guitar build, which I have documented the whole series on here on YouTube. Uh, I basically took the OM bending forms and just cut them out to match my template. I did not record making the mold. Uh, I just needed to get that done without having to worry about the camera, all right? It was, it was not a fun process. I did not enjoy it. A lot of MDF dust was made. So let's get started on the guitar. I'm gonna work on the, uh, I gotta get the sides and the back and then start moving forward on that. All right, I've got this piece down to just about where I want it. Just there's some spots that are at where I want it. And I'm really thin right here. This part was the first part I pushed through the safety planer. And I had, I took too much of a bite. So I had to force it through. It was really hard to get it through. And I think at the very end, it was actually kind of lifting up a little bit. And then took the blade, it was smoking and got really hot. So I backed it off and took smaller bites. But it's really thin here. It's even a little bit thinner than I wanted it. Uh, currently, my plan is if this gets too thin, I'm going to plan on this part right here being the back of the bass side of the guitar. So all of this piece right here that's really, really thin, it's like 0.1.2 millimeters thinner than I wanted it. So it's not that much thinner, but it's enough to make me concerned because I don't know enough. But for right now, you know, it's got some waves in it. And I did mention that I was going to get a, a, a drum sander or a thickness sander before I had the next guitar. And I swore to you that that would happen. Well, you know, it didn't work out that way. You know, cars break down and things happen and I'm just not in that position anymore. So I'm having to do this one by hand again, which stinks, but it is what it is. And uh, maybe for the next one, I'll get a drum sander finally. But I've got this double stick taped here and I had the idea to take my sanding beam and I'm gonna run it over this and that'll help smooth out some of those high spots, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is going to work great. I could already tell. I've got some X's here where I didn't want to do any more scraping because I'm at the thickness I want to be. And even sanding over this, this thing's long enough and flat enough, I can still see those X's. So I'm going to go right until those X's disappear. In fact, I'm going to do the whole thing so I can tell about whenever I'm flat. Well, came unstuck. Probably need to put more tape than that. Let me go ahead and finish that up. Well, as you can see, the first side was successfully bent. I think it's successful. I didn't hear any uh, cracking. You know, I could hear the crinkling of the aluminum foil I have wrapped around the side. As far as I can tell, everything went as well as it could have. I'm gonna let it sit overnight and cool down in this position. And I'll take it out tomorrow and try it out in the, in the mold. It has been overnight and I went to work and now it's the afternoon. So it's been quite a few hours. So I'm going to go ahead and take this side out of here and just hope it looks okay.
I don't see any cracks, which is good. All right, so the question is, will it go into the mold? I mean, obviously, yes, it will. This does have a lot, quite a lot of spring back, but I can push it out, which is good. So let me get these uh, spreaders in here. I mean, it does fit. I just had to fiddle with getting those uh, blocks, those spreaders matching exactly. So I found using some clamps. Get them kind of in place and then use clamps to pull them in place and then tighten the turnbuckles. Seems to work. Okay, you can see where I'm at so far. And this is gonna go like this. So this side's too long, I gotta cut that off. So it's gonna actually screw over a little bit. But you can see, I've got this piece bent. Now what's all that dark stuff on there? Well, <laughs> I almost messed up severely. I'm still not quite sure if it's gonna be salvageable, but um, I was bending this piece on the bending iron, kind of pushing and I heard a crack and there's a little small spot here where it started to crack so i put some glue in it clamped it up and then the morning i took it off and i'm about to sand it down to see what it looks like can it be salvaged i sure hope so i'm just going to keep trying to move forward um and to see what happens and when that happened i was so mad i had just a, such a feeling of despair and i just i wanted to quit i don't know why my human nature just wants to quit when stuff gets hard or bad stuff happens and I thought to myself, no, I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'll try to fix it and see if I can just keep moving forward and make it make it work. So that's what I'm trying to do. All right. So just wanted to check in. Um, I'm just going to try to get this uh, cutaway part together and then I'll check back with you. All right. I got the glue up done for this part. It's quite a mousetrap I got going on here, as Robbie O'Brien calls them. Uh, it wasn't too bad. I, I did a dry run for it and uh, that worked out really well. Um, I'm gonna let it of course dry overnight probably and then tomorrow hopefully I can get the sides uh, glued together uh, with the heel block and, and the tail block both in there. We'll see. All right, so just checking in. You can see where I'm at. I've got the little support piece in there and I've got the point glued. So um, one thing I did notice is I made a mistake with the mark I put on there. I marked five millimeters off center because uh, I marked exactly center on this block and the block was cut narrower because of the Florentine. So I should have marked center based on the original width of the block. So <laughs> I, luckily this part is not glued on yet. So I'm going to try to trim five millimeters off of the top right here. And hopefully this has enough, it is pretty, got a lot of spring back in it. So hopefully it'll shoot over five millimeters and still be okay. Yeah, and this has been drying for quite a few hours, so I think I'm good to take the clamps off. I'm going to have to take it out to, uh, so that I can cut this. Oh, look at that. Got the uh, shadow of the GoPro there. Hey, there you go. Oh, well, you're not doing it on the wrong side. I marked that side, but I need to have it on this side because I'm going to stand it up like this to put it through the, through the bandsaw. So transfer the mark to the other side. Well, the bandsaw has got like a uh, like a rough edge there, so I think it's good enough for this purpose. Yeah, you can see how much spring back this wood has. I mean, it's it just this piece almost wants to straighten completely out. Look at this. Look how much spring back there is. I mean, I gotta. Feels like I'm gonna break it every single time I do this. Makes me nervous. Makes me stupid nervous. Here. What's weird is that this center line still matches up with this center line on my mold. Now, how in the world did that happen? Okay, I see. Because the. Got the tail of it off. I do have a crack right here that I gotta fix. I think I twisted it just now. Well, I can't believe it, but I think I'm ready to. Glue the head, the heel block and the tail block on. Uh, I'm really nervous about this, but it's got to be done. So, got everything set up like I think I need need to have set up. I really probably can't see my face. But, um, I've got clamps here. I've got clamps over there. I've got glue, paper towels. I've got something to try to get glue squeeze out with. So, 
here we go, I guess. See, this is already glued to this, so I gotta get this whole thing out to put glue on it. Let me get this all done. <laughs> Just like the first guitar, I need to focus, all right? I'll catch up with you when I get done. I'm gonna do the tail block, get some clamps on the top, and then I'm gonna take the whole thing out and then put some clamps on the bottom side. All right, it's done, but goodness, that was not a good experience. Uh, I had a lot of issues, mainly when I went to take it out of the, the mold. You know, I had to get it out so I can get clamps on the other side. And unfortunately, the weight of these stupid clamps is so heavy, I should have used some smaller clamps, some lighter lighter weight clamps. I know for next time. So last On my last guitar, I used all these little bitty small 8-inch or 4-inch Bessie clamps. But I felt like it wasn't enough, but apparently it was. But these are just, these big ones are just too heavy. I mean, they're only six inches, but good grief! Uh, cracked right here, cracked all the way up to here. Luckily, this this side where the clamps are, well, you know, it's got glue coming out of it, so it should repair it on that side. But over here, I just kind of took a squeeze clamp and clamped it together. I'm gonna leave this here, and whenever I go to take all these clamps off, I'll still leave that one, and then I'll try to get some super glue down in there. I'm working on radius in the sides, uh, the back first, and so I'm kind of trying to eat away a lot of this side down to the block. I was trying to use this little plane. I'm scared I was going to crack something pushing up against this piece or over here. So I decided for now, I'm just going to use a chisel and kind of eat, eat my way down to the block and then come from this way and then do the same at the point. And then once I'm down closer to the block, then using the plane may be safer. <laughs> Just worried I was gonna chip something out. I'm just gonna work farther and farther back and kind of work my way down. So I'm gonna keep working on this and then I'll check back with you. Got most of the way done with the chisel here, and then I came out of this way, and then I did it right here too. I can take the little small plane and it's a little easier. I'm just gonna work my way down until I'm at least flat with that block, I guess. So now I think I'm ready to go ahead and drive the bus. All right, since the last clip, I've sanded the inside of the guitar. I'm ready to do the kerfing on the back side. So I've got some kerfing here, kind of wet it down and kind of pre-bent it on the outside of the guitar so that it at least has kind of the shape it's going to have when I glue it down. Just getting to this point with this Florentine cutaway, I can't believe I already made it this far, you know. I thought that by now I would surely would have failed and I would have had to scrap the whole project. But I can't, I can't believe I made it this far. Right, so I ran out of clothespins and uh, I don't have any more. So while I'm waiting on those to dry, those curfings so that I can finish, I figured I might as well go ahead and get started on the neck blank, right? What am I doing? <laughs> I almost put it on there the wrong way. All right, there we go. Finish this and I'll come back to you. All right, taking a break from the neck for a second. Well, uh, you can see I've got the kerfing done on the back. You haven't seen this yet, so um, doing it like this, these uh, sections here, is much easier than doing one long piece. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but uh, my side struts are basically going to go from between that gap all the way up to the kerfing on the top side. So I don't think I'll put those gaps in the top side. I'll make sure the kerfing kind of joins up more or less. But we do have to talk for a minute because <laughs> I've discovered an error. Just something I wasn't paying attention to enough and uh, I think I can get out of it. I can correct it sort of, but it's something I really need to pay attention to more uh, on the next one when I do this again. So uh, let me show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. 
All right, there's the heel block. And I got to looking at this, and when, the way I realized my, my error, that's the heel block. Now this line, when I did the radiusing, that line disappeared. So, because I sanded through it. So I wasn't paying attention to where that line was. Well, you can see this line here should line up with the center here of the mold, but you can see it doesn't. So it's off about three or four millimeters. This is the original center line of the heel block. Basically with the Florentine cutaway, I'm cutting into the heel block to try to make this right here line up with the edge of the fretboard at the 14th fret. That's what I'm trying to do. So I didn't try to make sure that that center line, that original center line was matched up with the mi middle of the mold. If I don't fix this, this edge of the Florentine will be sticking out past the fretboard and I don't want that. So in this example, my measurement needs to be about 28 millimeters from the center to where this meets up. Cause that's about half the width of the fretboard at the 14th fret. So I'm at 30. So this is supposed to be, if I, I can pull with my hand and kind of get it down to 28. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm gonna, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try to glue the top on with this pulled over so that it ends up in the middle. And the way I'm gonna do that is just, I'm going to install a clamp and clamp out. There's a kind of a gap over here between the side and the mold. What I should have done was whenever I did the top kerfing, I should have made sure this side over here was pulled all the way up against the mold, which basically lines this line up with the center. As you can see, now it's lined up. All right, I've got the router tip set up. I've got the fence where it needs to go, centered as I can get it. I want to make a few small passes and then I'll sneak up on it. This is nothing to do but to... Do it. Oh yeah, I like a glove. I like a glove. I've got a piece of veneer here, maple veneer. And I've decided to use Indian rosewood for the uh, head plate. Okay, I just don't want to mess this up. Just trying to make sure that my call or the head plate is going past the edges of the neck. Right, let me get this all tidied up and I'll check back. And just so you know, while I've got that head plate gluing up, I did start on the uh, top kerfing last night. I'm just glad it looks like it uh, got glued all the way down. I don't see any gaps, so good stuff. And I cleaned up this face. And the faces of these pieces. Make sure I got them in order. Yeah, that's a lot of squeeze out right there. Even more squeeze out. I think that'll about do it for that one. Okay, this has been drying overnight. So I'm ready to move the clamps. And I've got the last of the kerfing glued in and that sat overnight so get all these clamps off and see how it looks. Let me go ahead and get it out of the mold so you can take a look at it. Alright. Oh uh, yeah it's much more it's much more sturdy now. <laughs> Steak. Well I don't know I mean I say this is a pretty good stopping point for this video. Got a lot done. Uh <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and get the neck done and have this setting on the side for whenever I get ready or get done with the body. I'll be ready to go with the neck. It's looking really cool. I'm excited to move forward. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye.